Hello and welcome to Community College News, the show where New Brunswick Community College journalism students bring you stories that affect New Brunswickers. I'm Jocelyn Turner. In today's show, we look at Ormocto's newest alert system and how it keeps homeowners safe. And later, we discover how the Woodstock Suicide Prevention Committee is working to promote mental health. But first, on these cold winter nights, it may seem natural to want the comfort of a hot shower. But did you know you could be damaging the largest organ in your body? Your skin. Tony Bourgeois has more. Many people take showers daily, and some even more often. The type of bath soaps and shampoos you use, and how often you shower can actually harm your skin. Pharmacist Cindy Florton Kimball says selecting the right cleanser could prevent damage. Using soaps, quote unquote, is, a, is a great, not a great idea. Using non-soap cleansers is the best thing that you can do, um, because soaps are extremely drying. Using stronger soaps can dry out your skin. It can be much worse for people with pre-existing skin conditions. And it's not just the soaps that could do damage to skin. The outer layer of the skin can, is very thin, or can become really thin if you use too much pressure, too many loofahs, too much that sort of thing. Um, you want to avoid that, obviously, because if the, without that layer of skin, you're getting down to the deeper layers and you can cause more problems that way. Natalie Olmsted is an esthetician, and she says bathing in excessively hot water can remove the body's natural oils the body of its natural oils, um, it's going to feel very dry, of course. So if you have an acneic skin or if you're prone to breakouts, it'll actually have the opposite effect. If you've ever heard of back needs. Florton Kimball and Olmsted both believe it's important to bathe in lukewarm water. They also suggest that the best cleansers might actually be the non-scented or even goat's milk. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Most people are connected through some form of social media. The town of Ormocto has taken advantage of this trend for an important purpose. John Callan reports. More and more households have a computer and internet connection. Computers and cell phones are more frequently used to stay connected with friends and family. The Ormocto Emergency Alert System utilizes these forms of communication to keep its citizens informed in the event of a crisis. And if something's happened at home, they can be notified of what is going on and uh, as long as they give all the numbers of every place they're going to be, their own cell phone, their own email, their own telephone number at home, their telephone number at work, this emergency alert system can ring into all of those. Our Mukdo residents can be connected to this new system with a simple registration process. Information alerts are sent by phone, fax, email or text message. It allows us to have a database of all of the supplies and resources that are available to us. The emergency system is monitored and operated by staff using software developed by Sentinel Systems Limited. Everything from finance to First Nations can be called into action to play their role in the ongoing live updates of an incident. Kathy Stewart says there's plans to hold emergency alert registration at the Armocto Mall. At that time, residents without internet connection can be assisted with registration. In Armocto, John Callan, Community College News. This show is one of many produced by the journalism students at MBCC Woodstock. Keep your eyes open for our next show on Rogers Television. Childhood obesity has tripled in the past 30 years. Participation and other groups urge Canadians to stay active. Michael McDonald explores some activities to help you stay slim. Winter is cold and uninviting, but stepping inside the Carleton Civic Centre gives people in Woodstock the opportunity to stay active without catching a cold. Public skating is a good way to get exercise and many walk the path around the rink. This is an excellent way to stay active and it's for health reasons for me and, and weight loss. I find if I don't stay active in the winter, I'm not active in the summer. You get lazy and it just keeps me, keeps my joints moving better. About one million Canadian cases of adult obesity could be prevented if recommended levels of physical activity were achieved, according to the Canadian Institute for Health Information. It is especially important during the winter. Uh, we do tend to have a long winter season and uh, a lot of people get down and um, tend to stay in their homes and are, are not as active in, in the cold weather. The Civic Centre also offers public swimming and is planning a number of outdoor events this season. Something as simple as a backyard rink can give you and your kids a chance to stay active during the winter months. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. 
With the recent weekend storm, many people stayed inside and close to home, except for one community. Uh, Snowblast is um, in order to celebrate winter and have a great winter festival in the town of Florenceville, Bristol, and to bring people out of all ages just to have fun in the snow. Florenceville, Bristol kicked off its annual Snowblast event. Director of Tourism and Business Development, Melanie Clark, says Snowblast helped people enjoy the winter. This year, they had a new attraction. Our new venue this year was the Human Dog Sled Race, which was a huge success. We had three teams to kick it off, so next year we're hoping for really good participation. Hockey, cardboard sledding and other winter activities were held for the children. Special guest appearances included the abominable snowman. There are two government programs that give students the opportunity to travel and learn a new language. The Explore and Odyssey programs are funded by the federal government. Julie Samoris is a promotion agent. It would be always in the language you're learning or improving. You could do, uh, for example, uh, the different kinds of classes, dance classes, cooking classes, theater, radio, go see a movie, all different things that are fun. To learn more, go to www.myexplore.ca or www.myodyssey.ca. Those familiar red mailboxes could be going the way of the payphone. Canada Post is scaling back on the boxes in response to a steady decline in traditional mail. Jeff Stairs delivers this. How often do you send letters? Daily for work. Oh, probably three or four times a week. How often do I send letters? I never send letters. As more and more Canadians choose email over letter writing, Canada Post is working to adapt to changing times. The corporation has been quietly eliminating a number of roadside mailboxes across the country, about a thousand since 2009. Canada Post spokesperson Nick Lozier says the decline in paper mail has been drastic. What we've seen in the past four years is about a 17% decline in what we call the traditional letter, uh, whether it's a bill or a card or whatever. Uh, and and that, that's a business that's just changing. On busy Connell Street, a faint outline is the only reminder of the box that once stood at this intersection. According to Canada Post, the missing mailboxes were some of the most underused, and consumers still have over 31,000 to choose from. Logier says this isn't the first major shift the industry has seen. A similar drop in paper mail occurred shortly after the invention of the fax machine. In Woodstock, Jeff Stairs, Community College News. There are many different aspects to consider when running a cafeteria. The NBCC Woodstock campus tries to encourage student feedback to help improve their school dining experience. E.B. So George has more. The management of NBCC Woodstock's cafeteria regularly consults with the student government on menu changes. There are items on the menu that are junk food, but there are other choices available. Here they can have the opposite, but there's also the healthy options always available. Darash says they try not to let anything go to waste. One of the girls here, she has a lot of flower gardens and she composts. So a lot of our scraps, like when we're doing um, peppers, the inside of the pepper, or the seeds from melons, eggshells, we put all that into a compost area. She said they avoid using any paper products that are not biodegradable. And our company also is on what they call a journey to zero, where they're trying to do away with paper. They're getting us all on computer. Here are what some students have been saying about the cafeteria lately. Well, I like the food, and I think it's gotten a little bit better than the first of the year. However, I still think that it's quite expensive for students. We're not going to a fine dining restaurant. We're eating at a school cafeteria, and I think with that said, that they do the best that they can do. I think that the food tastes good, but I don't but I think that it's way too much money. Quality food is really good. Um, I enjoy eating here. The prices, on the other hand, are very high. Students may not be satisfied with the prices here, but negotiations are ongoing between the student council and the management. In Woodstock, Ibiso George, Community College News. The Bank of Canada is integrating new currency with updated safety features. RBC held an information session about the new money design. The Bank of Canada senior analyst Alan Paquette hosted the event and was pleased with the turnout. Oh, it was great. I really appreciate the folks here at the, at the RBC, uh, you know, kind of inviting people from the community to come out. It's a great opportunity for us to introduce our new currency, let people know about the new bills. 
Some of the new safety features include windows built into the bills and watermarks that only show up under direct light. But Kat believes the new safety features will make counterfeiting Canadian money even more difficult. February is Heart and Stroke Month in Canada and a grim reminder that heart disease is the number one killer of women. Commercials like Make Death Wait are trying to bring the message home. Please donate to fund life-giving research. Some students on the Woodstock campus did not know the disease has such a drastic impact on women. I didn't. I think it's good and it informs people that don't know about it. No, I did not know that. Emily Macon believes using February for heart disease awareness is a good idea. It's great, especially for health, because if you're uninformed, then you're not going to have good health. Education is really important. So. Suicide is a difficult topic to talk about, but the doors are open on this usually silent topic throughout the month of February. Ethan Hazlitt tells us why. Approximately 100 people will die by suicide each year, and it's preventable. February is Suicide Prevention Month. Marianne Purrington is gearing up for a busy time of the year. Social workers, nurses, and volunteers are working together to get the word out about this quiet killer. She says the best way to prevent suicide is to talk about it. Don't be afraid to ask, you know, and don't be afraid to say the words, are you thinking about suicide? Are you thinking about killing yourself? To help people understand suicide, a special effort happens every year. So it's more about raising community awareness and ensuring that individuals do talk about suicide and that would help with community awareness with the prevention efforts. Suicide doesn't affect only one person. The emotional and traumatic stress of dealing with the situation can hit closer to home than you'd think. I think that um, suicide definitely affects not just the individual and the family, but it affects the larger community. Reed worries that the emotional toll and the knowledge that someone else has committed suicide could lead to a domino effect. If you or a friend are struggling with depression or thoughts of suicide, the committee strongly suggests calling the nearest mental health centre. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt Community College News. That's our show for today. If you have an interesting story idea, email us at jschoolnbcc at gmail.com. For more of our work, visit us at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.